Oh, no. Why? There's so much weird stuff going on that I'm noticing. I'm trying to stay focused on like, <laughs> on one thing at a time. This looks very similar to the systems I built in 2004. Look at how lonely these memory modules are. They have no friends. One of us is going to survive this. Is, is it just me or do this motherboard be looking a little sus? Reviewing this computer is quite the adventure. This is the Dell G5 5000. We bought it for about $900, and it is genuinely worse than the Walmart computer that we bought and reviewed a few years ago. And for a lot of really low-hanging fruit reasons, all the way up to more secretive and sneaky reasons. So this thing is riddled with problems. In fact, it's been such a challenge to review specifically because of that because we've had trouble trying to condense down all the issues into one tightly packed video. And what we're gonna end up doing is running two videos. We have this one for the teardown and the discussion of many billing and support issues from Dell. So these are the two factors that if you are uh, not too informed on computers and you're just buying a pre-built because you don't wanna deal with the hardware level information, these are the things that matter most for you. And Separately, if you are a person who does know about computers and you just want to buy a GPU basically in a box because it's hard to get one independently right now, well, we have other issues to pass along to you. But let's get into the review of the Dell G5 5000. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and store.gamersnexus.net because how else could we afford to subject ourselves to the horror that is reviewing a computer like this? Your support on the GN store is how we can afford to buy pre-builds like this one for in-depth review free of influence from the manufacturer. Our brand new red and black charge mouse pad is now on the store with a GPU layout design, custom red rubber underside, and red stitching. It's a high quality mouse pad that's joined by our also brand new component mouse pad in blue and black, resembling a mini ITX motherboard in block diagram layout. If you want something wider, our desk-sized wireframe mouse mats with detailed, high-quality 3D design are available on back order and will be shipping out in about a month. We've had insane demand for these, and if you want to guarantee that you get one in the next round, back ordering is the best way to do that while still supporting our research. Visit store.cameransnexus.net to grab one of our mouse pads, mod mats, bar runners, or other items. This thing is dismal. It's been really tough to review because uh, again, is there's so many things wrong with it that it's like trying to stay focused long enough on any one thing to write about it is a challenge. So really quick list of issues before we get into it. Again, this one is going to be the teardown. So we're going to be looking at the assembly quality, the component quality, uh, the type of parts used, like this absolutely bizarre power supply. It's not even ATX 12 VO. It's something special. And we'll also be going through the uh, support and the billing. We'll go through benchmarks in a separate video. We do have them though. Not super promising, but we do have the benchmarks. And we'll be going through the uh, bloatware in a separate video. So as we ramp into this coverage, one thing we want to make really clear is this is not intended to be DIY, do-it-yourself, build-your-own-computer elitism. We think there are a lot of valid reasons to buy a pre-built, and there are good pre-builds out there. In theory, we're working on finding them for you. But the thing is, we'd like to see people buying pre-builds that actually make sense to buy. And in this instance, as you'll find out, it makes a lot less sense than the competitors. So that's really the problem. It's not about build it yourself versus don't. It's completely valid to not build your own computer. I don't cook my own food or do this, the oil changes on my own car. That's because I want to do other stuff, so I pay someone who's good at it to do those things. And the same goes for computers. You don't have to build your own to get something good, but you should get something good. And that might be provided instead by a competitor, and we'll look at those as well. But this thing is a $900 computer. It has an i5-10400F, and it has a GTX 1660 Super. This is actually not a completely abysmal deal right now in terms of pricing and what you get. If you buy it from Dell.com, it's about $850 to $900. We bought a system from Dell.com that's coming in from the Alienware family and have a lot of commentary on that buying process that we'll include in this video. But either way, you're $850 to $900. Bucks, and given the current GPU market, sadly, it's not too bad if you can use the system for something and not just one part. Problems. Most of these parts are proprietary. That limits their usefulness in other cases, limits your ability to resell it, limits your ability to pull stuff and use it for your own system. And if you are a pre-built buyer because you don't 
want to ever open the computer and use it. The bad news there is you're going to have a very difficult time keeping this thing in service and alive as parts eventually start to age and fail. Another problem is the bloatware. It's absolutely insane how much garbage is on this system. 30% GPU utilization in some instances, and we'll talk about that in part two. The uh, benchmarks are not particularly stunning for any metric. And then the support and the billing aspect where Dell snuck charges into our invoice when we purchased from Dell.com for the Alienware system. And also, uh, not knowing who we were when we requested support on the billing for that, Dell then used my personal cell phone number to try to access our account information without notifying me. So I got a one-time passcode and immediately had several hours of my day ruined because I was trying to make sure we weren't under some sort of targeted attack on our account. Not that there's anything valuable from our Dell.com account because, well, I mean, you know. For the rest of the specs, there's a single stick of eight gigabytes of memory. There's four DIMM slots here, one stick, and it's 2666 megahertz. This is, at this point, an Intel limitation. There is a, a very small M.2 SSD, it's a 256 gigabyte drive, and there's a hard drive in there as well, but that's about, that's about it for components. And the video card is a non-branded uh, Dell vBIOS loaded card for a 1660 Super with one of the absolute worst cooling assemblies we've ever seen on a video card. Let's get into the teardown, and then we'll talk about the other myriad issues with the Dell purchasing experience. The back of the box is clearly custom built for the G5. Uh, we'll find out once I get in there, but this to me looks like the case is actually stamped for the motherboard. There's a little bit of ventilation here where it looks like there's an 80 mil fan. For some reason, this is, this is what we're using. And the 80 mil fan is held in with these rubber uh, just tabs that will pull through as opposed to fan screws. And that is, I mean, they could argue it's for noise, but most likely it's for ease and maybe cheap. Now looking at the case, the first thing I notice is that the, the right side, it comes up, it's got two screws as normal, but it comes up here and it wraps over the top of the chassis frame. So that's a little non-standard, but then you get over this side and it's actually riveted in, it looks like. So I'm not sure, there's probably just no cable management room. Actually, if you look at where the motherboard's aligned, that looks like it is going to be in fact the case where I don't think there's going to be anything between the motherboard tray and this side panel, hence riveting it in, which is very unfortunate, but uh, it's a small box. I guess that's what you get when you have a small box. The power supply is clearly not ATX. The front of the case actually looks pretty good from a pure look standpoint. Dell has done a good job of making a case that looks a lot more expensive than it is, which isn't meant to be an insult. That's what most case manufacturers do. Um, Unfortunately, once you really look at it, it is a lot more restricted on the airflow than it appears. First of all, these are very thick pieces of plastic. So the actual air space, the gaps between all this plastic is not nearly as much as it looks. And also once you look behind it, I can see a solid steel wall in at least the top a uh, couple inches there of the panel. And that means that this Obviously, it's all just for looks in that area. There's no actual airflow through there. Okay, enough exterior. Let's take the side panel off. Screws captive or not captive? Screws are captive. Yeah, that's good. For $900, I would hope we could at least do that much. Oh, there's even uh, instructions on the side. Let's see what that is. By the way, if you want one of the mod mats that I'm working on, you can go to store.gamersexus.net and grab one of our anti-static work mats to protect your table while working on computers. So here's the instructions as soon as you pull it off. I'm curious why Dell would need removal instructions so readily accessible for video cards. I'm cynical about this type of thing in a pre-built. This to me doesn't bode well, but maybe they're just being really, really nice. Uh, so here's the panel. It is acrylic and kind of an older construction style. Uh, definitely unique to this build because it, the way it's all bolted in and, uh, and overly complicated for holding the panel is, is not really standard these days. Now before we look at the inside of the system, 
and to illustrate a point I made earlier. So I'm going to shine a, a light, a hand light, through, and wherever you don't see it shining through, it is blocked off. So this is obviously completely blocked off, especially up here. There's steel paneling. It's a hard drive here, so there's no air coming through that area. And eventually we get some light shining through in this region. This has been thermally tested already. I have not taken this thing apart. This is my first time looking at it. Uh, we did thermals though before any disassembly. So, because I assume once we rebuild it, we're going to rebuild it better than it was built. And uh, we wanted to test it out of box. It is largely obstructed even down there. And there's no intake fan. So the only fan you get is an 80 mil in the back. And then there is a CPU downdraft cooler that is embarrassingly cheap on this 10400, this poor 10400. This isn't even a standard Intel cooler. This is a special, this is a Dell special cooler. So that's already been thermally tested. We'll look at those numbers later. Uh, and then internally, I, I see a lot of things that are really interesting to me. So let's start with the power. Just looking at this thing, first thing I noticed, there's no 24 pin and uh, there is an EPS 12 volt. I'm a little bit scared to hold on to this. Oh, this is an LED bar, plastic, plastic bar for LEDs that is screwed into the hard drive cage. At least they screwed it into the steel part. That's good. And into the front of the case. What is this? Let's pull. Oh, okay. So that's that. There's no screws holding the video card in. Uh, but I guess that's what that's supposed to do. EPS 12 volt. We have two four pins here. We have a completely uncovered VRM, which as long as it's Powerful enough for the CPU. If that's in there, that's fine. We'll test that for thermals as well, but no, no, no um, heat sink on the MOSFETs. And the 24 pin's missing, but we do have down here a six pin. Now the ATX 12 VO spec that's eventually replacing ATX in theory is uh, supposed to be a 10 pin to replace the 24, not six. So this isn't quite ATX 12 VO. It's a little bit different, it's unique. And we'll have to we'll have to look at it, maybe probe the pin out to see what's going on. Uh, there's purple, gray, blue, black. These are not standard colors that that uh, I'm aware of, and it's not a standard pin out for a motherboard. So we all are already in territory of having a proprietary motherboard. The form factor is also I don't believe a standard that I know of. It's it's not ATX. It's not a micro ATX. It's not mini ITX, it's not EATX, it's not SSI EB, it's not SSI CEB, puts us in proprietary component territory, or at least adjacent to it, bordering proprietary parts. Because if you ever have a power supply failure, you will have to get an extremely specific power supply to replace this one. Uh, and likewise, if you have a, a motherboard failure, you'll have to get a new power supply to work with the motherboard that you end up buying if it's not this specific board. Component choice. We have one stick of RAM. It is at least in the correct slot. And, oh God, that is, that is such a sad, sad stick of RAM. Look at how lonely these memory modules are. They have no friends. And this is an eight gigabyte stick. It is PC4 3200, so we're 3200 megahertz. It does not run at 3200 megahertz, but Dell has notated this and it's manual. And it, in fact, runs uh, at 2666 for this CPU, but it'll run at 2933 for other ones because this is not a Z-series chipset. Let's take the GPU out. This is interesting, too. This is not a branded video card. It's using a standard 6-pin, at least. So it's a PCIe 6-pin. That's kind of a start for some kind of standardization. So there's the video card. NVIDIA does not make this uh, product as like a thing that you can buy, but they do still enforce their branding. Uh, this shows up in GPU-Z as a Dell video card, which means it's a Dell vBIOS on here. So it's Dell firmware. Someone else is making the board for sure, and the, I mean, the GPU is obviously made by NVIDIA. We might want to take this card apart, though, and look at the memory cooling. Uh, but actually, you know what? Not even necessary. So you can kind of see a gap in there where there's no thermal pad contact in the memory modules. I'm not gonna take this apart yet. This looks very similar to the systems I built in 2004. Uh, reminds me of the Pentium 4 era. The slots are the right color, motherboard's the right color and, and weirdness. The VRM has nothing. The chipset heatsink is comical. 
Uh, plus the fact that it's not even secured with screws. They've secured it with this contraption. So I, it might be leftover stock from Pentium 4. There's so much weird stuff going on that I'm noticing. I'm trying to stay focused on like <laughs> on one thing at a time. Let's look at the power supply. I'm assuming these screws will free our power supply. Okay, well, that's simple enough. The shroud, I give them credit. Like, it's a small box. It's a custom box for an OEM system. For whatever reason, I have absolutely no idea. They've decided to put a window on this thing because look at that, it's beautiful. There's, um, well, don't look that hard, but it deserved a window for some reason. And to give Dell credit, since it has a window, they have actually done a decent job with cable management. There's not a lot of cables to manage, but uh, there is a shroud. <laughs> it's doing a lot, right? Let's see. It says it is rated for max 500 watts, but it also says it's limited to 18 amps on 12 volts. So it actually can only do 216 watts on 12 volts, which is not a lot. This just in. So the power supply is 80 plus white label. And this power supply is, um, as with Walmart's, is probably less of a joke than the OEM branding would make you think. But we may test that separately on our power supply tester. Yeah, that's OK. All right, front panel is attached to the case by wire. It's a bit of an old style, as opposed to having, is this even four LEDs? Look. No. Why? So, I mean, uh, this should probably just be attached to the chassis instead of the molded panel, but to their credit, you can disconnect it. They get credit here too. So the IO is attached to the chassis frame. That's good. This is not a new thing. This has been happening for about a decade now, but OEMs have always been really far behind here. So credit to Dell for attaching it here instead of to this panel, because then when you pull it out, all the wires would be stuck to it, and that just sucks. So good job there. Uh, the SATA power is coming from the motherboard, which is similar to ATX12VO style, in that ATX12VO says you literally only have 12 volts only out of a power supply. Uh, this Is this 12VO? Let me look. This is only 12 volts. It's not necessarily 12VO spec, but it is only 12 volts in the power supply. So what's happening is the power supply is feeding the board with six pin, and the board is then doing the conversion to uh, five because a SATA drive is going to take five volts. So board's doing conversion to five. That is probably what this VRM is down here in the corner. Got a VRM down here. And that connects. So your SATA never goes to the power supply, it goes to the board. And that's a glimpse at the future for you for 12VO style. Uh, the board ends up handling it instead of the power supply for the, the uh, voltage. And then SATA cable is, as always, where it just plugs straight in. All right, so it's a custom lighting board. It's just a controller. They've labeled it properly. So this is actually called lighting clear door. So not bad, Dell. Let's get the board out. That was a bizarre. Oh, wow. That's different. This is a super non-standard motherboard. All right, so everything I said earlier about this being a weird form factor and not knowing quite what it is, there is, in fact, a good reason <laughs> for that. The board uh, extends all the way here. This is insane. Why? Dell, what the actual f are you doing? Never actually seen anyone do this before. Maybe 20 years ago. Why would you do it that Why? Why would you do any of this? OK. Time to take the motherboard out. That's not into the, no, no, come on. You didn't do that, did you? Oh, they're insane. Wow, literally insane. They screwed the cooler into the case, not into the motherboard. The cooler screwed into the
in case. So the cooler then uh, is part of the security to hold the board in place, which means the cooler has to come out if the board comes out. Why would you make a load-bearing CPU cooler? I bet, I bet it's this one. I wonder if that's going all the way down to the mother of the board or the tray, I mean. You assholes. Okay. Oh my god. Well, it was kind of glued into the thing. Okay, there's the motherboard. Yep. So that was just the system. To make all this very clear again, we ran all the benchmarks before the teardown, but they're going up in the next video because we thought this was probably convincing enough to make our point with this computer. There are many other pre-built systems out there that are better than this one. The biggest problem with this thing is even at $900, even if you're like, this is actually kind of a good deal right now because of the stupid pricing on video cards, uh, to get an i5 10400F and to get a 1660 Super, and then you figure out the rest of the parts on your own. Even in that scenario, you're better off buying something like one of CyberPower's computers for about the same price. And even if we don't particularly like one of those, and we did get one in, by the way, we haven't looked at it yet, but even if we don't like those as reviewers, the difference is with something like a CyberPower, an IY Power, whatever, main gear, with one of those systems, if you get something that sucks, it's a very easily correctable issue because most likely it's going to be something like the case. Maybe the BIOS configuration, maybe there's uh, a physical defect you can exchange with them. But the, in the very least, all of the parts are standard. They have form factors. You can move them into another computer and still make use of it. This thing, as soon as it's done, becomes e-waste. It goes to the landfill and it gets thrown out and you, from an economic standpoint, are left holding the bag of, well, I guess that'd be the components that are left. So you'd be left with a socketable CPU and an absolutely terrible rendition of a GTX 1660 Super. The cooler doesn't even contact the memory. And the cooler is not good either, by the way. Maybe more content for a separate video. The CPU cooler isn't even usable. How insane is that? It's, made, it's metal and a fan. And you can't use it in other places because it's a stupid proprietary, more or less, cooling solution that mounts to the case. So you, you can't move it to your other systems. Even the case, which is a metal box, is proprietary because the front I.O., and by the way, the rear uh, I.O. shield area, both of those are molded for the Dell-specific system. If you don't know a lot about computers, you just, you're like, you know what, I don't, all this stuff this guy's saying, I don't really care. But if you just want to buy a pre-built system to game on, you should still care about this stuff because all of these problems mean that long-term, you are going to end up buying another computer when you might have an issue that is very easy to resolve, even if you don't want to fix it yourself. Even you're going to bring it to a shop and have them fix it. Now, as for the billing, we have a whole lot of other problems with this. So for the Alienware system we bought from Dell.com, there were a few problems. One of them we talked about already a lot in two different videos now, where Dell had an auto opt-in for that system, $10 a month charge, that they were saying, this is a promotion. It's free for the first month for support. But there's a free one-year warranty, and free in air quotes there. We're going to get back to that. So there's a free one-year warranty you could choose instead. And then there was the $10 a month charge for this system. It might be like five or something. But it was a charge that didn't start occurring until after the first month you've had the system. So you're a lot less likely to see that charge because there's going to be a $10 tick on your credit card a month after you buy the thing. And depending on how carefully you look at your statements, you might not notice that. And uh, also, it's just a pain in the ass, even if you do notice it. And it's extremely unethical. But credit to Dell in the same way you'd give credit for attendance. Uh, it did change that policy back after all of our complaints. They emailed us, by the way, to talk about this. Back to the free option instead of the bullshit, sneaky monthly charge option. So that's a good change. We haven't vetted their entire website, but it looks like it was changed for at least a few of the systems that we looked at. Problem is, that 
free warranty isn't actually free. And this is something we noticed when one of our viewers emailed us, thank you, you know who you are, uh, and told us that they had purchased a system from Dell and they had a roughly $67 charge on their invoice that they were not made uh, abundantly aware of when purchasing the system. We went and compared. We had the same $67 charge. That charge listed for on-site warranty support and it's not something you can opt out of. It is forcefully included in the price and it's included in the free warranty service. It's not free if it costs $67. That doesn't even seem legal. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't know. It seems questionable. And Dell, by the way, agreed on the phone when they called us, not knowing who we were. I explained it immediately. I said, uh, just so you know, we're a media outlet and we're reporting on this. And she went, okay, and then continued to talk to us. So the problem is that this charge, uh, Dell told us that they are looking for a resolution for this $67 charge that is listed under a line item for the warranty that was listed as free on the website for the Alienware system we bought, not for this one, we bought this from Best Buy. And when our viewer tried to talk to Dell and get the charge removed, they disconnected from the chat with our viewer. We went through the chat process. We said, we didn't want to pay for this $67. I apologize. I don't know if I didn't notice it or if it wasn't made clear or if it's a hidden charge, but I don't want it. Uh, the system hasn't shipped yet, please remove the charge. And the support fought me over it. And again, it's not like we were like, do you know who I am? It, we were just talking to them as a customer. And they fought me over it. And eventually, I started making angrier and angrier statements as a customer, started making some threats about returns and things like that, and they offered us a credit for the charge. So it was possible to get it back if you're willing to be kind of a jerk about it to use a word that I can say on YouTube, not that it matters at this point. But it's the whole thing's problematic. It's extremely scummy and slimy. And at the end of the day, if you are buying this for parts, you don't get many parts you can use. It's a problem number one there. If you're buying this to use it as a system, be very careful about your billing. Uh, and you might have to be a little bit aggressive with them to get some things refunded, but they, they did eventually do it. And if you are buying it to use, and you're okay with those charges, uh, more power to you, I guess. But just be aware that the system is not good value and you can buy any number of other brand systems and have something that is much easier to carry forward as it ages and probably has better parts. This video card, again, not good. Cooler, not good. We have benchmarks on this thing. It's horrible. And also the noise isn't particularly impressive either. BIOS is terrible. So there are better options on the market for similar price. As for that $67 charge, what did Dell say to us? Well, they said, we're trying to find a way to basically still charge you for it uh, without making it visible. So their solution, they asked me for a screenshot of our invoice and they said they wanted to see where that charge was appearing on the invoice because it's not supposed to show up. It's supposed to be included, absorbed into the cost of the system, a line item above it. And I said, so, there's free warranty, right? She says, yes. I was like, and, and the free warranty has a, a $67 charge associated it, with it that accidentally was made visible to me as the customer. She's like, right, yes. And, and so then you guys want to absorb this cost into another line item to hide it from the customers for the free warranty, right? And she agreed with me. So. Just watch out. They're, they're trying to, I told them my advice is to get the word free out of there and say, it's included in the cost of the system. We'll give you on-site support for one year. That's not a bad selling point, but you have to make it clear and you can't tell them it's free and lie about it. So that's it for this review. Don't buy this thing. Genuinely worse than the Walmart purchasing experience. At least that thing was a bucket of parts that you could use somewhere else. And at least in that one, after they sent us the correct system, we had no extra recurring billing costs or other bullshit hidden in there like we're going to have or we would have had with the Alienware system if we didn't get into a big fight with Dell over it. So uh, this one we bought from Best Buy, that is the safest way to buy this computer because then Dell doesn't have your credit card information. A retailer does. But it doesn't fix the problem that the parts are not good. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.cameraxis.net. If you'd like to support us directly, we will have more reviews of pre-builds. We're genuinely trying to find good ones. 
We haven't so far, but subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.